from our previous discussions of static and dynamic dispatch, you might have gotten the idea that there is no point in dynamic dispatch because static dispatch is always faster and it doesn't take up so many computational resources as well. So I want to show you a scenario where dynamic dispatch really is the only way. There is no way to do this particular operation statically. So let's suppose that we have a bunch of geometric shapes in the system. So for example, I will have a circle. Uh, which has a radius which is an f64 and in addition I will have a struct called square which has a side also an f64 and I want to have some sort of trait for calculating the area of these particular shapes so I might define a trait called shape and this will have just a single function called area so take the self here return an f64 so this is the trait that we're going to define for the square and the circle as well so having made uh, this kind of trait, what we can do is we can implement this trait for circle and square. So in the case of circle, well, let's do the square first of all. So we'll impl shape for square. That's easy because it's just the side squared. So function area self returns an f64. And what we do here is we return self.side times self.side. Now, I hope you remember your formula for the area of a circle so, because we're going to implement shape for circle now. There we go. So once again, area self uh, returns an F64. Now here we're going to do a bit more complicated because remember the area of the circle is pi r squared. So we say self dot radius multiplied by self dot radius uh, multiplied by, and then we need the pi. So it's std f64 constants and pi like so so that's the calculations now let us suppose that we have an array of different shapes and we don't know what those shapes are so i'm going to have uh, an array called shapes it's going to be an array of uh, four shape references so uh, i'm going to have precisely uh, four elements here and here are the elements themselves okay so we're going to have a uh, circle uh, let's have it with radius radius 1.0 uh, in addition I'll have uh, another circle let me just correct this so I'll have another circle well let's say radius 2.0 but in addition I'll have a bunch of squares as well so I'll have a square with a side equal to uh, 3.0 3.0 like so and in addition I will have yet another square so I'll just copy this with a side of 4.0 for example so I have these objects in an array and then let's suppose I want to go through this array and actually calculate the area of each object in the array and it is precisely dynamic dispatch which allows us to do this because what we can do is we can say for example for i comma range and here I can say I'm going to take the shapes I'm going to iterate through them with iter but I'm also going to take the index so I'll say enumerate so this way I get not just the shape itself that should be shape by the way but i also get the index of the element i'm iterating so here i can make this nice looking for loop and here i can print line something as well so for example i can say i've got shape uh, with the index so and so which has an area so and so and then the index is obviously the variable i and the area is calculated by taking the shape that we're enumerating this shape variable and calling area on it like so now this is where dynamic dispatch happens because when you call area on a shape the system basically takes a look at the actual type of the element and it finds the appropriate implementation so if my shape happens to be a square it looks up the uh, implementation and it finds the area for the square right here if it's a circle it finds an area for the circle as well and so that is how we can calculate this in a this kind of very general array that we've made. So now what I can do is I can actually take this code and I can execute this. And as you can see, I get the right output. So for the circles, I get pi and pi multiplied by four, whereas for the squares of sides three and four, I get the output nine and 16, just as we expected. So essentially the takeaway from this is that dynamic dispatch does have its place in that there are situations where you don't really know the type. So in this case, for example the shapes variable is a combination of circle squares and there might be other types here as well you don't know them exactly at compile time you could be calling them from some other function feeding in this array so you want to iterate the entire array in a generic fashion and this is only possible using dynamic dispatch